Hey, what is going on YouTube? My name is James and welcome back to another video. So today I'm actually recording this entire video using my camera uh, on my phone, the Samsung S5. So I want to know after the, you've finished watching this video, what you think of the quality, the audio quality, everything. I'm shooting everything exactly how I would and I'm treating this video more as a test of whether I can do everything using my camera or my phone because the camera I usually use to do these reviews isn't mine so it's very difficult to get hold of it sometimes and obviously with all these watches that I've built up I need another source of um, recording the videos. So yeah before we get into it obviously the usual disclaimer I'm no expert when it comes to watches I'm just someone who loves to collect watches. So today we're going to be taking a look at and discussing a watch that's going to split the community right down the middle in my opinion and that is Harness Luminous Marina. Um, this is actually a homage to obviously the Panerai. Um, and we're going to get into more detail about all that in a minute, but yeah, without any further ado, let's change perspectives and get into this review. Okay, I'm going to be recording this review essentially how I record all of my reviews. I'm going to cover the basics, go over the pros, the cons, and the final conclusion um, of, of this watch. So let's get straight into it. This is the Parnis Luminous Marina, and this is a homage to the PAM. Uh, 00511. Now this watch right here comes in at around £165, which is around $215. Now that is a bit more on the higher scale when it comes to Parnis, and uh, you'll see why in a second. So the movement that this uses is the Miyota 821A. So it's got a very reliable Miyota in here. It's actually a really, really good, um, really good movement. And as you can see right there, it is actually really well decorated. It's completely black, and it just matches the gold very, very nicely. The case size is around. 44 millimeters. The case width is about 14.7, so nearly 15 millimeters. The lug size we are looking at almost 24 millimeters, and lug to lug we're looking at around 53.2. I'd say closer to 54. Um, but yeah, so it's a very it's a very large watch. But then again, so is the actual Panerai. So let's get in a bit closer to this. Um, I'm still trying to get used to uh, using the phone as as the way to record these videos. So let's try. I think I'm gonna have to have one glove off to do this. There we go. So now you can see up close um, the dial right there. Now, as you might be able to tell, this isn't a super reflective crystal. It's actually using a double anti-reflective coated. So on the front and also the underside, uh, sapphire crystal so this is actually sapphire crystal which means it won't scratch it does have loom it's actually terrible loom so i won't be showing you the loom in the video because i just can't pick it up i've uh, tried with cameras um i've tried with like taking pictures i've tried with lots of different ways to try and get the loom to show up and it's just not working. and this watch is water resistant uh water resistant to about 100 meters now with the movement i have recorded about a 20 second increase each and every day so it's not the most accurate of movements um, but it's still, it's not terrible, um, but it's definitely not very good. Okay, so let's get into the pros of this watch. Um, it uses, and this is the thing that shocked me the most when actually I was researching this watch. This right here is 904L stainless steel, which is comparable to obviously the 314L stainless steel that most, most normal watches use, especially most of the Parnasses. And this is using 904L. For those of you that don't know, that's the same, same grade steel that... Um, that Rolex use. Obviously, I'm going to assume it's probably not to the same standard, but it's still pretty incredible. Now, just to show you just how heavy this watch is, because it's ridiculously heavy, um, let's put the scale. Okay, so we're just going to put it straight on. 136 grams right there, guys. That is 136 grams for a watch that is on a suede strap. So that means this right here weighs literally a majority of the weight. Yeah, as you can see, that's pretty much around, I'd say 120 grams of this watch is just the weight of this. It is crazy heavy. Now, another really great thing about this watch is the fact that it's got a sapphire crystal. You know, they've not cheaped out with just a mineral crystal. They've actually gone that extra mile and put a real sapphire crystal in here. And also the movement, you know, it is using a Miyota. Um, which at the end of the day is a really really good movement. Let me see if I can get a focus in on it There we go. That's a bit better and as you can see it's actually been very very nicely decorated That's one thing I've really noticed with these parnasses. They are decorated very very nicely the movements are usually great Now another really cool thing and one thing I've noticed with parnas is their straps are usually terrible um, But this one right here is this beautiful sort of leather suede strap that just feels so comfortable on the skin This underside is definitely not 
like really rough on the skin it's very very nice and the oversight is just beautiful it just feels so so nice and it matches so nicely to the gold which is obviously gold plating it's not real gold also they've gone the extra mile and actually matched the gold buckle it sounds ridiculous but i see it a lot on cheaper watches they will do the the case gold and then the buckle they'll cheap out on and just make it stainless steel but they've gone the extra mile and made it the same sort of coating as the rest of it and it's made of the same steel now the crown guard is obviously at the end of the day we've already discussed that this is a homage to the panerai so it's got the same sort of crown guard it feels very nice the manual winding is satisfying it's not overly clicky it's not like too loose it's a very satisfying click and then obviously you pull this out which releases the crown guard to which then you can pull out the movement um, or pull out the crown to then use the movement now it unfortunately is not um, hacking but it is manual wind which is pretty cool and it just it feels very nice to move it's not like too loose it's not got a huge delay or anything like that and when you push it in one more then obviously you can change the date which feels very satisfying also um, and then you push it back in and put the crown uh, put that little lever back down and it locks in the crown as you can see right there This crown guard is going to come in very useful if you use this watch as a beta And at the end of the day, that's why Panerai have put them on their watches now this movement operates at uh, 21,600 beats per hour, so it's a very sort of generic sweep. It's nothing overly smooth, but it's definitely not you know a bad sweep at all um, and it's got 42 hour power reserve which is very very useful um, you know you can use this watch all day and then pick it up <laughs> the next day and it will still be ticking even the day after that it should still be going strong and obviously the other pro of this is it is 100 meters water resistant which means you can take it out and um, it, it, it'll be fine it'll be fine in the rain it'll be fine all that though I'd advise putting a different strap on it because I don't think this would last very long in the water at all um, but as you can see right there it says 100, water, 100 meters water resistant right there you should also be able to see the reference for this exact model if you're interested which is the it's pa6047 right there okay so let's get on to the cons of this watch and there's a there's a few um and obviously we'll go on to the homage part in a second but um it's got poor loom the loom is just terrible i think it'd have been better without the loom to be completely honest because it just is awful um also i don't think that date window suits this watch at all i think it'd, it'd look a lot better without that date window you got rid of that and you'd have had a really really nice watch um i'm not a fan of the gold plating i would have much preferred just pure stainless steel i think it would have been a lot better though they do obviously do just stainless steel versions of this watch now let's get on to the homage part at the end of the day people say all the time and this is the common thing i hear which is why would you buy this it's 165 pounds for the same price you could get for example this you could get an skx now do, when you look at these watches do you see, see the same market you know it's very obvious to me and i don't get why it isn't to a lot of people that the people who buy these and the people who buy these are two completely different markets so using that excuse that well for the same price as this you can get this doesn't work because the person who is buying this sort of watch isn't in the market for something like this they want something like this um so that excuse is always you know baffled me because at the end of the day they're clearly clearly not the same market so in my humble opinion i think I think homages are a good thing. Now, everyone's going to be like, wait, what? I think homages are good because at the end of the day, the fake market is huge and this is legal. At the end of the day, yes, they are completely ripping off the Panerai and just writing Parnas, but at least they're not trying to be Panerai. At least they're not put Panerai on the dial. At least they're not trying to really completely trick anyone. At the end of the day, I think these sort of watches are great because this is incredible build quality. I think if you put this on your wrist, you will definitely get a sense of a very well-built watch. And a lot of people can't handle that. Personally, I have owned the Alpha Submariner, which is obviously a homage to the Rolex Submariner. Now, that watch in itself may allowed me to make the decision that Alpha... Um, or sorry, the Rolex Submariner is not a design I want. Whilst obviously the build quality is completely different, but based on pure aesthetics and design, it was made to literally look identical. And I, I came to the conclusion that that isn't what I want. And I thought a Submariner would be something I'd always want. And, you know, a homage, a homage allowed me to make that decision so I don't end up spending thousands of pounds one day, which I do plan to do. I, I plan to spend a lot of money on watches one day, uh, obviously when I can afford it. Um, and it allowed me to, to realize that that isn't what I want. So I think there definitely is a place for homages and people in the community need to be so, need to stop being so critical on them um, because this is a great watch. You've got a very good movement. You've got very high grade steel. You've got a very nice design. And yes, it is completely ripping off the Panerai, but this is the person who's buying this probably won't be able to afford a Panerai. So it's not stealing their 
their customers. It's not ripping off Panerai in that sense. It's just ripping off the look. And I understand that some people can't live with that. And I understand both sides completely. I just thought I'd throw my two cents in there. But at the end of the day, that's my opinion. And I understand if you differ with opinion. So now that's the homage bit out of the way, I think this is a bit too big. This watch is a bit too big in my opinion. I'll show you a wrist shot real quickly on my right wrist. So it works very well. You can definitely see that this watch doesn't look ridiculous on my wrist. Um, and I have a six and three quarter inch wrist, but I just, I'm not a big fan of this sort of huge design. I'm not a big fan of Panerai's anyway, to be totally honest. So um, that's probably why I, I don't like how big this is. So to conclude this review of this uh, Parnis Luminous Marina, um, I think it's a very, 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 very well built watch for the price. You're getting 604L stainless steel, you're getting a very, very reliable movement. You're getting an overall very good watch with a great strap. Um, with a really interesting design, which is, I know it's ripping off something else, but you get my point. Um, so if you're in the market for something like this, I think this is a great option for you. Obviously, at the end of the day, would you be better off with an SKX? Of course you would. It's original design. It looks crazy. Like, it looks crazy good. It's built like a tank, but... These are two different markets. The people who are in the market for the SKX are clearly not in the market for this, and the people who are in the market for this are probably not in the market for the SKX. So, that leaves the, the markets completely different. So if you are in the market for this, I don't think you can go wrong with it at all. I think this is incredible build quality for the money, and I have to say, it really has shocked me. So that is gonna wrap up my review of this Parnis. Uh, let me know what you think down in the comments. I'm always interested in hearing your guys' and girls' opinion. Um, and yeah, let me know what you think on the whole homage subject as well. It's definitely a very mixed subject, and I'd like to hear what you guys think. At the end of the day, no one's wrong and no one's right. It's just all opinion. Um, so yeah, definitely let me know what you think and let me know what you thought of the quality of this camera um, Because obviously it's my uh, my Samsung. So let me know and I will see you all again in the next one guys Thank you for watching. Take care and peace out